Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And this week, we are reacting to the official explanations of the cards on the Commander ban list. So if you didn't know, uh, mtgcommander.net, they recently went in and added uh, a summary of the, of the reason why each card is banned in the format. Uh, so we are going to uh, delve into that and uh, see see the, the rationale be behind some of these bannings. Joined with me today is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing, Seth? I'm doing great. I love talking about uh, the ban list. One of, my, one of my favorite things to talk about, so it should be fun. And Phil, Brewer's Kitchen, filling in for both Tomer and Krim. What? Ooh, double duty <laughs> filling in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not a big fan of the ban list, but I'm excited to talk about it. All right. Uh, before we get into today's show, uh, today's show is brought to you by Ultimate Guard, premium protection for your trading cards. Uh, all the gaming accessories you see on this channel, like on Commander Clash, are supplied by Ultimate Guard, so you can flick your cards silky smooth like saffron olive. Check out ultimateguard.com. And also Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. And their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of $1 or more and pay just a 5% service fee. And you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mdggoldfish. So thank you, Card Conduit and Ultimate Guard for supporting today's show. So, Ultimate Guard comments of the week. In last week's podcast, we did the Karlov Manor tier list. Top voted comments. Elo Mother 2164 Richard always blows my mind. He's always like, don't one for one removal. But then three for one exile spell comes out and he is like <laughs> down on it. I just think he doesn't yeah. believe in any removal. <laughs> <laughs> Richard just wants us to play our removal, but he skates under yeah. the radar and kills us. I think that's the actual theory. <laughs> I'm a big fan you of guys. the cut, by the way. it's It seems very... Like, I don't play Chaos War, but this one I will try. I should probably Wait, play so, Chaos so Phil, War as well. You like, the, you like the card? You like the card? Yeah, I mean, it... it the cool part is that it exiles your own stuff as well, and you cloak the top card, so it's even upside in this way. I'm going to try it out. So far, I haven't drawn it, but I am going to play it in every white deck until I can cast it, and then we see. Nice. I, I will say, though, so, so most of the time, people just dunk on me, and uh, I feel they misrepresent what they said, but if, you, <laughs> if I said, but if you read the comment thread there, there's actually a good discourse of what's going on, and some people actually get the point I'm trying to make. Some people do not. Uh, but check that out. That that's actually a very long comment thread. It was a very controversial thing. So we'll we'll see. What what is the card called? Unexplained absence. Is that the name of the card? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're gonna see if that shoots up to the top of of played cards in EDH rec or not. My guess is no. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into let let's get into dunking on someone else that's not Richard. Uh, the ban list. I, I feel bad about this because we just had that comment about how we dunk on the RC. But we just have to give our so, constructive so, feedback <laughs> on and, the ban list rationale. And it's worth mentioning that, so this is, the, these rationales are the rationales when they ban the cards. So this is a lot of times like what they were thinking in 2005 or 2007. It's not like they just made these justifications. So so may, that might make it a little better, right? Like uh, we're just like talking uh, about. Okay, so no? so so okay. as a, as a meta discussion, how do you feel about this? So I get what they're doing. They're like full transparency. Let let's add our reasons to you know the cards. However, as we're gonna find out, a lot of these are outdated, and I'm not sure they match the current philosophy of the RC. So why go ahead and post outdated rationale to confuse everyone? Like, why not just pretend it doesn't exist until you fix it? And then you can make an announcement. Because I feel this adds a little confusion by, by posting things that, like, don't make any sense. Unless they're saying it makes sense. I would much... I think it would be much more productive to hear the breakdown of what the current RC is thinking about the cards on the ban list. I think that would be like the really valuable information more so than like, Oh, back in 2005, we thought biorhythm was busted or something like, oh, okay, like sure. Like that's cool. But that was also 20 years ago. So yeah, I don't know why. I mean, I'm glad they're being transparent about it, but it does also maybe open them up for 
criticism that wouldn't have been there otherwise. Yeah, it's just uh, why would they do this? (laughs) Why don't they evaluate it? To give us content, Bill. Thank you, Lars. (laughs) 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 All right, let's jump into uh, Power 9, Power 8, because Time Twister is fine, guys. (laughs) Power (laughs) 8. So uh, the original Moxin, one from each color, Time Walk, Ancestral Recall. What's the eighth one I'm missing? What's the last? Time Walk, Ancestral, Time walk, Moxin, Black ancestral. Lotus, right? That's oh, Black five, Lotus. Six, seven, Black eight, yeah. Only the most iconic card in that. <laughs> uh, Black Lotus, all banned. And the reason is basically the same. I'll, I'll, I'll read you Ancestral Recall. Uh, version because it's alphabetically the first one. Uh, Ancestral Recall was originally banned for poor optics rather than power level. While it's plenty powerful, its effect on perceived barrier to entry that really uh, it's it's the effect on perceived barrier to entry that really posed a problem because casual players watching commander games and passing could reasonably assume they needed hundreds uh, brackets, now thousands of dollars in power 9 mana uh, at table stakes just to join the format. Ancestral Recall was an iconic and expensive card at the time it was banned. Removing it from the card pool was intended to combat the notion that Commander is prohibitively expensive and uh, inaccessible format. Yeah. I, well, I hundreds of dollars, Seth. Hundreds, Can you uh, fathom Hundreds this? of dollars for your Ancestral Recall. <laughs> yeah. Well, they <laughs> had it rough back then. I'm actually like... Oh. So it makes sense, right? Commander would be worse if these cards were legal. Could you imagine, especially with like how scarce they are and the like reserve list, how pay to win it would be to have like so few copies of these out there. The thing is, though, I'm curious about does this logic still hold like if the problem is it's poor optics that these cards were hundreds of dollars. What about all the heavily played cards that are hundreds of dollars today, like original dual lands and Gaia's great. There's a pretty big list of cards. So like. Does this philosophy not, like, do they still hold to this philosophy at all? Or was that just like, oh, 20 years ago we thought this mattered and now it doesn't? That's my big question about this one. That's the whole point with the reserve, uh, with, with the ban list is you can always point to another card that's like, why is this not banned? And in this case, why isn't Time Twister banned? If it's also <laughs> part of the Power 9, it's also several hundred dollars, maybe more. But this isn't banned and you could, like, <laughs> and we will run into this problem a lot with the ban list, which is why I'm not a big fan. I don't think there's a way to make a reasonable ban list, honestly. Why did they just posted this? Just for criticism, pretty much. So th- this is the thing where it's definitely power level related, but they don't want to say it or it wasn't formalized, right? Because the power level of a dual land like the, the the gap between dual land and the next land, it's kind of eh. Like, yes, it's more powerful, but it's like, you know, eh. Ancestral recall over anything is a huge power gap. Same yeah. with the Moxin and all of that. That's so true. they were like, it's expensive and powerful. So they banned it. And it made sense back then. But if your philosophy is to ban expensive cards, like Seth said, there's like a billion things you could be banning. Yeah. And also, CDH players don't care about price why is it bad for them wouldn't it be sweet to have ancestral recall and cdh uh and it's it might actually be balanced there or at least you could like fight it reasonably uh so this is the i think that this is we're gonna see this problem in a lot of band lists where they're like it's not power level but it really is power level uh because like think of i don't know tabernacle Tabernacle's pretty strong. Chains of Mephistophically. Like, there's a <laughs> bunch of, like, old crap that's, like, really expensive. Like, no one cares. <laughs> yeah. Right? Uh, but uh, what do you think about, like, a blanket ban on the reserve list? Or a blanket ban of cards over, I don't know, $100 or, or something? Mm. Like, like you, you just make some random threshold and you're like, if it's more expensive than this, it's inaccessible. Get it out of here. Or everything on reserve list. Get it out of here. I, I don't know why Underground C gets to a begin pass with. while these <laughs> other cards get cut, right? Uh, it is. That is like, uh, yeah, it's it's hard to grapple with logically. Like, why wouldn't that also be an issue? The Underground C is $700. Like, honestly, the original Dual Lands, I'd have to go back and check this. And unfortunately, Goldfish, we weren't around back when this happened. I wanted to see, like, what was the actual price of these cards when they were banned? I would guess that the Dual Lands are as expensive as the Power 9 was when they were banned. So, like, apples to apples compared you'd think that was true right but like you said it's actually kind of like 
power level related? Would you even want these cards unbanned? Like, let's say we lived in a world where there was no reserve list and they reprinted the power nine and they were 10 bucks. Would we want these cards legal? I think the answer would still probably be no. Like, I don't want to play against Time Walk or like no. Ancestrals may be fine or like even more Moxin and Fast Mana. I already want Zoring out of the game. I don't want five more like busted Fast Mana pieces. So I feel like it was the correct banning, but I don't think the justification for the banning actually makes much sense which is maybe part of the downside of putting all these justifications out there is it is really easy to be like oh what about all these other cards so i think they got to the right conclusion but maybe for the wrong reasons if that makes sense or at least the stated reasons feel like the wrong reasons cdh would be hot I would, would you I would like, like it like... would you enjoy cdh with power i don't know how like if would you go wild. from legacy to vintage isn't it Ooh. better oh, like yeah. there's no place to play these iconic cards Right? Like, if you want to play a mock something or other, like, you, you can't, right? Or you want to play Time Walk, you can't. So why not play it in CDH? And all of these are shadow banned from, you know, casual commander in the same way Mana Crypt is, yep. is shadow banned. Or I, I don't know, like, even, like, the normal mocks, like Opals and stuff. Like, if you play that, people, like, raise an eyebrow in the same way they would raise an eyebrow if you played Ancestral <laughs> Recall. But then again, this is probably worse than, like, Ristic Study. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> If you could choose one between Ristic Study and Ancestral Recall, I think I put Ristic Study in my deck. No. Um, yeah, I, I think that's actually true. Yeah, <laughs> Commander. Recall is way less offensive, actually. I think Recall, <laughs> yeah, you no, can exactly, do end of turn. Right? So I draw like, my power level is actually okay. Like, I mean, it's, it's another strong card, but I don't know. I I think a, a, just a blanket reserve list ban could, could do the trick. Yeah, but just the reserve like, list isn't the like reasonable Belvedere. list as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you, <laughs> like, but you just say these cards are inaccessible and wizards can never fix it. So we're just going to ban it. Yeah. Right? I, Whereas if you sure. ban something like over $500, like wizards could theoretically just reprint it and it'll drop under 500 and it'll be like super weird. Think Portal, like Three Kingdoms or whatever. Ma Maybe both, like reserve list cards over a hundred dollars or something. That that would ex that would mean you could still put your Feldegrifts and like all the bad cards, but <laughs> but also cut out, out the expensive ones. Yeah. No. yeah, but yeah, maybe there's some <laughs> to downside there. The price. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. That was my plan. <laughs> Feldegrift finance. Okay. Uh, here's a card I'm super interested in because. Uh, I actually came back to Magic the Gathering when this card was in Standard. So it's super iconic for me. I see it all the time in Modern. And it's Prime Time. It's Primeval Titan. That's your six mana, six, six with Trample. When it ETBs or attacks, you can search up two lands, uh, any lands, and put them on the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. The reasoning. It was first printed in July 2010, banned September 2012. So it was banned whew, 12 years ago. Maybe 11 if you round correctly. Uh, yeah. In a format where six mana spells are, are par for the course, a card which tutors any two non-basic lands then demands an immediate answer to prevent its owner from further accelerating their mid to end game is problematic. Even if it's removed immediately, the lands it gets are hard to interact with. The result is it decides, but not ends, the game frequently. And when it doesn't, will often become the focal point for the rest of the game as players fight over it. We want commander games to be decided by who casts the best big spells, and prime time easily tips those scales. Huh. That last sentence doesn't make any sense to me, huh. but yeah. okay. <laughs> but they're not wrong. It is, like, it gets worse with every land. Like, Fear of the Dead, for example, brutal for this. I, I mean, if you want to ban stuff, this is probably too much. Same with the green primordial. It, I do oh. admit, like, I play a lot of landfall decks, but they are all strong enough. Maybe don't give them the best thing ever. I don't know. Like, if you... I personally wouldn't ban anything, probably, but it seems insane. Like, truly insane. Six mana is nothing for a landfall deck. I'm glad you mentioned the green primordial. I'm glad you mentioned that, because I, I think for me, when I was reading through this, that's what I got stuck on. So, like, they also, I guess that was on my list. So the green primordial, if you don't know this card, is since it's banned, seven mana, six, eight reach. When it ETBs, you get to destroy a non-creature permanent for each of your opponents, and then you get to ramp a forest for each permanent that was destroyed that way. So in theory, you play it, blow up through your opponent's lands, get three forests or whatever. Uh, this was printed February 2013, banned 2014, 
machine and is as sometimes considered as an attempt to fix Primeval Titan, Sylvan Primordial ended up being just as bad and sometimes worse. It can only get forest, but it still accelerates by two or three lands by knocking other players even further behind, often flickering out to repeat the effect. The result is a mana gap that is usually insurmountable, and Sylvan Primordial is yet another example of a card that looks fun as a deck builder but makes the game repetitive. So my question is, like, if the issue with Primeval Titan is that it's like too much because it gets to any two non-basic lands and then it gets two more non-basic lands and you're tutoring up these great lands, they did kind of fix it with Sylvan Primordial, right? But that's still too much. Where do we draw the line on these effects? Because you can Cause flicker it, Seth. Because you, you can flicker, can flicker anything. <laughs> and we also live in a world with friggin' Dockside Extortionist. Two mana, True. two mana to make yep. like 20 mana and you can flicker it and you'll win the game. So maybe they want a big, I don't even understand, like the six mana versions gotta be banned but the like two mana version is like perfectly fine the consistency is the part that just blows my mind like is it right the primeval titans ban probably but like there's so many other cards you can point to like dockside where i'm like if that's the issue why is this not an issue too i mean i don't understand why prime time needs to be banned like i, I think silver promoter is a joke compared to you prime just want to get your field of ruins <laughs> or field well, of I the mean, dead it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's this right it's it's six mana and if you don't kill it you're probably dead. That's like a list of like 200 commanders or something in, in commander. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> it's the same thing, right? It's like, it's some commander that comes in and got its value already. And if you don't remove it and they untap with it, you probably dead. Right. Mm -hmm. That's like every card in, 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 in modern day magic. These were banned in 2012 and 2014. If you're scared about three land ramp, you know, you can open the way for five mana and get three non basics onto the battlefield. Maybe so, like, if you can't choose them. Like, oh, or six, you can get brutal. four. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, there, there are cards plenty powerful like these cards today. And, like, you can blink. Sure, you can also panharmonicon it. Mm -hmm. uh, like, there's all kinds of things. But there's all kinds of brutal things you can do if you're going to add the blink combo or the panharmonicon combo to this, right? So, like, what about, what about doubling season Planeswalker? <laughs> right yeah. like if we're gonna yeah. if we're gonna do this like you can do this all day right so it's so inconsistent i think like these are clearly power level bands like it's not a play pattern that's exceptionally right we ramp like they're the saying it's so commander. powerful that it's repetitive right but power level in 2012 and 2014 don't hold up to power level today so it's weird that they're still banned and like dockside is the perfect example dockside does the same thing it's blinkable it makes a million mana. The game devolves around copying the dock side. <laughs> like if it's actually it's there. True, yeah. Same thing, right? But dock side's fine. It's not and fine. On the... <laughs> <laughs> but it's there. It's, it's not, not exactly on the fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's also worth mentioning on the power level thing. The reason that that keeps coming up is like the commander ban list explicitly says that that's not what it's about. Like if you read the format philosophy, like kind of the philosophy is we don't ban cards based on power level. So that's why it's kind of weird to see cards that seemingly maybe are banned by power level. I do think the most interesting line in Primoval Titans Breakdown for me, and I want to ask you about this. The, uh, the result is that it decides but not ends the game. What do you think of that? Is that the problem with Primeval Titan? Is like, you know how we sometimes complain about Cyclonic Rift, how uh, it decides the game, but it doesn't actually end it because the game keeps going on and on and on forever. Is there any argument to that? Or yeah, like, like if Primeval Titan was Crater Hoof and it just killed everyone, would that be okay? Like, is there an actual argument that we need the cards to actually make people die for them to be acceptable? It's double tutor plus shuffling every turn. They, that's it is very annoying. I again, I don't know if there's any way to make a reasonable ban list, but it is super annoying if your opponent does it and then the other person like like for copies time it, purposes, and then you're saying both right? of them are yeah. tutoring and uh, I, oh, they, have you ever oh, seen land like list. Us tutor with a CDH deck or Tomer. Can you imagine that? Like the like fifteen minute of like not really knowing what land do I get here, and, and then having to shuffle okay. and do it again the next. I mean, that's easy. On up time people's time <laughs> yeah. Okay, like it's, like, it's it, always it, field of the dead. It, it's field of the dead for value, or it's the combo kill if you're like trying to combo off. <laughs> I I I don't know why they say it doesn't decide the game. So should farewell be banned? 
It yeah. decides the game without ending it's it. It's fine with me. Oh, 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 Film oh, gets oh, shadow realm. Yes. Yeah. But the game doesn't end. <laughs> should we should we should we ban that? Like yeah, I should sure. like, oh, <laughs> all <laughs> the <laughs> things. <laughs> it, I think this actually reasonably ends the game. No, like like you you're making great strides yeah. towards like we're literally saying if you untap, you're gonna win. <laughs> right to be that, fair that, that that's to me good... sounds like you're about to win the game <laughs> but you don't so, yeah. really like so you don't really win though right like you pull really far ahead but you don't necessarily like actually make the table die like oh you got more mana maybe you made some zombies but like i i could see why that's a little different right it's not the same as like a combo that literally kiki combo or something where literally the game's over like instead you got a six six and some lands or maybe you got you know some cool like, cool cute this, lands that don't actually do anything and you keep it going this is like seagate restoration should be banned <laughs> <laughs> like like if you get off a seagate restoration and you don't die you've probably won the game but you haven't won the game right you just right. drew eight and got away with it yeah or like open the way you ramp four and you didn't just fall over and die you're probably gonna win the game Right, but I don't see how this is any different. You've ramped. You only ramped two, by the way. You have a six-six body. Uh, you're gonna win the game. Probably. I get a Vizuva, but if it a... dies, you got two lands. Yeah. You're ahead. That's just ramp. <laughs> two I don't land know, right? and a couple like, of zombies. I, I think this it's was before really... zombies were even made. Yeah. Two, yeah, that's what I mean. It gets. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what you could fetch up in 2012. <laughs> you're probably forests? just getting forests. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about Sylvan Primordial, Richard? I think we all agree. So, Primeval Titan is the better of the two. Is Pr Sylvan Primordial enough I safer that it should be legal right. in the format? Or you, what do you think, Phil? I'm curious. This, I think Primordial yeah. is insane. If you can flick it once, you're so far ahead. I think that's that might be worse than like it destroys stuff, right? It destroys non lands or something. It does non non creatures, so it gets non creature. Yeah, so it destroys lands. Yeah, good luck winning against this if I ever ephemerate and this. That's three times. Oh, so that's a difference of you, nine lands. Should if you not blink in green, it though. be an Flickers issue? Not. Like, oh, there's a lot of things yeah. that are good if you blink it. It also hmm. hits lands. I, I I think you could go for the land destruction angle to yeah. annoy everyone. Yeah. Therefore, I could see it happening, but. Green can't flicker by itself. This is not an inherent flicker color. So you yeah, gotta pair it. can flicker. You can do that. I guess there's green like, if you want to. You can also do it. There's an artifact that flickers. Oh, uh, what's the, the one that does end the that? Something portal conjuring. thing. Oh, yeah. portal? There's a couple. The of, like, there's Conjurer's a couple. Conjurer's Closet or something. Yeah, Conjurer's Closet. That's what I, I was thinking. I feel of. for seven mana. Like, this is not that annoying. I, I, I can see how this doesn't end the game, though. Like, you just flicker, you just keep ramping, you just keep removing things, and you don't end the game. So, like, I, I can get that. I, I can see that <laughs> yeah. not end the game argument, but I think this card is so quaint. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel we do a lot more disgusting things in Commander nowadays. If, like, if you have a flicker engine online, is Sylvan Primordial the top of your hit list? Like, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I think we could flicker some crazy wait, so, things. Wait, wait, wait. Do, it enters the battlefield. It destroys three lands and yep. puts you three ahead. Yes. Yep. Although the lands just are split up between your opponents, so it's one for me. Yes. You can't get one person yeah, three yeah. times, but and, still, and you're, yeah. you're 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 relegated to forests too, so you, you can't yeah. do like crazy but, yeah, basic forests, right? But those surveil lands, Richard, no, no, you any can get forest. those surveil. Oh, yeah, oh that's that's just like <laughs> any. Nah, that's insane. It's, it's, it's <laughs> worse than Titan, honestly. Triumph. How do you? Yeah, okay, maybe maybe it's too. Yeah, I guess getting non basics does make it kind of busted, doesn't it? Hmm. It's seven or eight mana. The game's gonna end somehow. But we don't. But we don't ban on power level though, right? So it doesn't matter how <laughs> yeah. disgusting it is. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, the memeiest card of all, Coalition Victory. It is a um, eight mana spell that requires all five colors <laughs> in it. It is a sorcery. You win the game if you control a land of each basic land type and a creature of each color. First printed in 2000, uh, it was banned before the format started. They don't even have a date on this, which means it was banned coming in. Uh, Coalition Victory threatens a strong negative experience largely <laughs> out of nowhere for a casual table where the game is expected to go long enough that a spell such as Coalition Victory will be cast. In general, tapping out at a healthy life total against an opponent with nothing... But any five-color commander in play shouldn't cause you to lose the game unless you have signed up 
for that kind of experience in which collision victory is far from your biggest problem. Steering folks away from this kind of experience is at the heart of what the bad list is trying to accomplish. So any nine mana spell. So, okay. Or eight. <laughs> Whatever. Eight. So if you have a commander and you untap with eight mana and you win the game, that's, that, that's unacceptable. The, that's yeah the most unacceptable can they just the heart of the ban list in response <laughs> they 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 could yeah they, if they, they kill your five color commander in response look you're tapped out you could you can even uh what, what's the black free commander spell you can remove their creature oh, deadly relic yep. deadly relic you could force of negation it you could force you could force of will it that was in existence at this time this is 100% we hate combo players, <laughs> casual players, battleship, duke it out. And this is the epitome of that. And we've kind of gone away from that. Like, the RC doesn't make those bans anymore. Yeah. So I don't know why this is still banned. This should be unbanned. Yeah, even yeah, would this it even make just it, for fun. In, it, would this even make an impact? Like, let's say we unbanned it. Like, how big of a problem would this even be? Because it really doesn't even work with most five color commanders. Because like Kenrith is technically mono white, or Goshintai is mono yeah. green, but they the color identity makes them five colors. I don't actually think it would be that big of a problem. Like just looking at the most popular five color commanders, more than half of them are not actually five colors. They're really colorless or mono colored, technically. I can see what they're going for, like how we meme on Tomer about the Kiki combo kills and like with the winning out of nowhere and it invalidates the rest of the game. So I can see that. It's still eight mana though. There's so many cards that are eight mana and essentially just win you the game, even without having your commander on the battlefield. Like, is that really unacceptable? And yeah, insurrection. insurrection. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, once you get to that amount of mana, you're getting to the expropriate insurrection, rise of the dark realms. Like you're in that realm. And this is five colors, so you can't even play it in a lot of decks. Is it really worse than that? I don't know. I don't think, uh, do you think people would be upset about this? Because it sounds like that's what, the concern is right people are going to be salty if they're playing a game of commander and like out of the blue i'm at 40 life coalition victory the game's over i feel like i would think it was kind of cool at least the first few times <laughs> even if you phrase it like this like playing your commander and then playing a spell playing your niff mizzet and then playing curiosity is way less <laughs> mana it's also like you can't even argue that it's too easy to cast your commander and then combo with it because that's a lot of decks do just that so Coalition Victory, I mean, to me, is the most hilarious one on this list. Demonic Consultation, Thassa's Oracle, right? Like, yeah. there, there's, there's plenty of the. There's, like, literally, like, I, I, I have a bunch of 1-1s. One I untap it for two mana. I triumph of the hordes or whatever. Like, you know, like, there's a million cards that do this. I, th This is the epitome of, like, we don't like combo kills. And... <laughs> we bet that like I, I can see that philosophy, but you gotta apply it to the whole format. You gotta remove all the combos out of it. But like there are people that like combos, right? So then keep all the combos in, right? And this is far from oppressive. This is far from like power level pushing. So I don't see why. And if we unban it, nothing will happen. There'll be that one hipster person at your <laughs> LGS that tries to make coalition victory. And then they're gonna see it, it hurts so hard that. Yeah, again, like like Phil said, you could have Niv Mizzet out, and for one mana, <laughs> you can do this, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, there's... there's like a million like two card combos with your commander out there. So, I don't know, I don't know. Like this, this is one of the funny things. Like when they when they put together this article, they should have just been like, "Hey guys, we should just unban Coalition Victory." Yeah, oh, yeah look, <laughs> 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 right. That that that's like a easy <clears throat> slam dunk, right? Oh. There's, yeah, it is, it seems like a slam dunk, although I think there's even a more slam dunky card for me. The one that I absolutely cannot wrap my brain around is Sway of the Stars. Sway of the Stars, it's 10 mana sorcery. Each player shuffles his or her hand, graveyard, and permanence into their library, draws seven cards. Each player's life total becomes seven. Uh, it was banned, who knows when, printed in 2004, so I guess it's always been banned. Casting Sway of Stars has the effect of completely negating the game that was in progress before its resolution. Sway adds time to the game and takes away action. You might as well shuffle up and play a new game. My question is, what about Worldfire? This is literally Blue Worldfire. And they just unbanned Worldfire like a couple of years ago because they decided that it was okay, I guess. Why is Worldfire 
okay and unbanned, and this is banned, it, because oh, they always talk about this, like, we use bannings to, like, send signals about what is and isn't right, and that's where my signals get very crossed, because the signal <laughs> yeah. you're sending is these cards should be okay because you just unbanned Worldfire, but why is Way of the Star is still on the ban list? What, what is the message we're getting out of this banning, and, or am I missing something? Is there some reason this is way worse than Worldfire that I'm not understanding? Yeah, it's blue, seven life and blue. In red, you can play Chandra, give everybody an emblem, word fire, and win. In blue, I get it it probably adds like half an hour to the game and it's another game. So you could also say we play a blitz game of twenty life and we have the same experience. I kinda get it. It is pretty it just drags out the game. It would be fine if it's I mean, at least it doesn't do anything, so it shouldn't be banned. Like, it's not like if, if it put you at forty, <laughs> I could get it. But you're at seven. Seven's pretty like, low. You're, you're at seven. Seven is very low, and it took you 10 mana to get here. Like, again, I'm, I'm going to keep bringing back Farewell. Farewell does the same thing, right? It completely invalidates whatever's on the board, uh, resets the whole thing, and, and you know adds a good 10, 15 minutes to the game. This is probably better. This brings everyone to seven. <laughs> like, you're all in striking distance of dying, right? <laughs> so I, I don't buy this this is 2004 like i can't even imagine how you cast this in 2004 but somehow no, in no. 2004 this card was released <laughs> and i i don't know there, there's no date on the banning so that means that it was banned from the get-go again like i, I, I don't guess know what that's this, my assumption i guess it's like yeah. Shaharazad. like it is just an extra game i kind of get it. unless you but, but you're at seven life detection response. you're at seven yeah. life that's within yeah. kill, killing range right like world fire right like you combo to kill them at one life. You can combo to kill them at seven life, right? Like 40 I can get, but seven is so low. Like seven is so low. It, it's fine if they unbat it. It's just boring. But I guess if you have a yeah. plan for it, sure. Otherwise, I'm, it's just starting a new shorter I, game. So it's <laughs> fine. I would I feel like... I mean, if this is a problem, I would think a card like World Purge is like even like just as problematic. Just like bounce everyone's permanence, <laughs> you're empty everyone's mana uh, pool, so you can't like do yeah. the upheaval stuff, and that's legal, and no one plays it. So I feel like with cards like this, no one's like even if they unbanned it, I don't think it's going to see heavy play because a lot of people are no just going to opt out of playing it anyway. Kind of yeah. want to try it with suspense and foretell cards and just to throw my stuff in exile, reset everything and start Ooh, with resources okay. coming in over the turns. But that's, that's actually like, neat how idea. much mana is that? And it's not even unfair or something. It's just, you could do this now. <laughs> but kind of I mean, you, you have to omniscience or make infinite mana or something yeah. to cast this. And at that point, I mean, like, what the heck is mana. casting this thing? Yeah. I guess it just drags everyone's game on and makes everyone salty so maybe they have a point yeah that part <laughs> maybe they're like sense. if your deck is capable of casting this please cast the real magic the gathering card <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah you yeah you could just be killing us yeah <laughs> is that it <a laughs> so we, we we played the murders of markov pre-con decks oh on, on clash oh. and i uh morgan was editing it i was just chatting with him about it and we were like i drew my whole deck and I couldn't kill anyone, make any progress, or interact with the board. <laughs> like, should my whole deck have been banned? <laughs> I just wasted. I just wasted everyone's time by playing these terrible cards that did literally nothing. And I, I feel that's kind of the argument of sway. This art is like it's so bad, and like you're you're wasting everyone's time. Don't even bother playing it. it, it, it we're just gonna ban it so that if you somehow manage ten mana, you'll put like a legitimate spell in your deck. Like, is that I mean, an argument to just banning terrible cards? <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I want terrible cards being banned, but I guess, like, if we're playing against Sway of the Stars regularly on Commander Clash, I would probably not be enjoying it. So maybe there is some merit to that. But how would you actually manage that, though? I guess maybe it wouldn't be any harder than how we currently manage the ban list. But how would you decide what is what is a miserable card or terrible card? <laughs> it's like, look, you've, you, you've, like, spent eight turns, spent, like, 50 mana, you haven't won the game. Whatever you're doing yeah. banning it it's basically yeah. eggs level yeah <laughs> right like whatever you're doing ban it uh, yeah, oh yes we, we, we do us. we do the arena rope you have 30 seconds to do your turn <laughs> no matter no matter how no matter complicated what. the board state and if you can't win in that time your cards are not powerful enough so play better cards yeah like how about, we how about just that? your deck gets banned yeah if you don't win in those 30 seconds we start banning cards <laughs> yeah i mean well, i can actually I, I, see actually, how banning. i'm actually for this Th yeah. This one drags the game on longer. 
And I can see how that makes the format better. Yeah. yeah. But we're all fucking. The coalition victory. You win the game or you lose the game right there. I don't get that one. <laughs> yeah, then you just shuffle uh, and play another one, right? Yeah. Speaking of winning the game, Flash. Uh, mm. Two mana, blue instant. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. If you do, sacrifice it unless you pay its mana cost reduced by up to two. Printed in 1996, uh, banned in 2020. Flash effectively allows players to evoke a creature in their hand for one U, uh, me- or one blue. Many other formats have recognized that the mechanism that Flash uses to do this prevents meaningful interaction. Worse, because Flash's power is tied to the creatures that are being cheated into play, its power increases over time as creature designs become more powerful. They didn't mention the Hulk, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. They didn't, they didn't mention any. Like, this is the weirdest explanation for me because I lived through this when a lot of these were like 2004, 2005 before I was actually playing. Like, this one was, it was busted in CDH. So they banned it because it was busted in CDH. But you can't really say that, right? Because then it's obviously a power level thing. So we end up with this kind of like, it lets you evoke creatures and it's good in legacy. So we ban like, I don't, what are they even trying to say with this what, description so, of this? So what is the Flash Hulk combo, Seth? explain oh how the flash hulk combo actually works <laughs> oh god you're gonna put me on the spot okay so, so you use flash <laughs> but i don't know if i get all the other creatures right but you use plans to put protein hulk into play protein hulk is a creature that when it dies you just search your library for any number of creatures of mana value total mana value six or less so the idea is you put the hulk into play with flash maybe on turn one even with a little fast mana hulk will die because of flash because you choose not to pay uh its mana cost because you can't pay it and then you're going to shoot up a, a, a lethal combo that's often like uh, Revlar, Kiki Jiki, a sacrifice outlet, and you end up with an infinite creature combo that you can do. It's a little convoluted because it often involves like get a karmic guide to get back the Hulk and sack it to a Viseracy or to get more stuff. And then it ends with like a Kiki loop or whatever. But essentially, if you flash a Hulk into play, you should win the game that turn by tutoring up a lethal combination of creatures. But no one played it in Casual Commander. Like no one, no one was doing this. It was like literally cl- very like zero percent. It might have literally been zero percent on EDA track. This is, I think, one of the most controversial bannings, right? It was made for CDH. It was definitely made for saying. CDH. The CDH community used their one time on this one, I think. Would <laughs> please, because please ban an, this. <laughs> yeah, it's an instant speed combo, essentially. Right, it's still a two card combo. It's two mana, though, instead of, like, say, Thoracle, which is three mana. But Thoracle needs to be done at sorcery speed. Yep. Uh, I don't know if this is actually still broken, but you can see how it's very powerful. Does it matter? <laughs> like, no one's going to play this. It's, it requires a very specific combo. I, I don't know. It's the, yeah, philosophically, I think is the most interesting part. So it's a little bit like Thassa's Oracle in the sense that no one was playing it in casual anyway. So it really didn't harm much because it was just not a card people were playing, but it was super popular in CDH. It kind of wraps us back around to one of our previous episodes. We were talking about, like, should CDH be its own thing? Should it have its own ban list? This is the ban that I think exemplifies that the most. Like, we could have more of these bannings if the formats were split. I think it, it's probably fine, but I just worry that it's going to happen again, right? Just because the formats are so different. So what is the next time we need to ban something? And what if this time it's something that we actually play in casual? Like, that would be that would be a concern, I think. Yeah, that's the problem. Flash is kind of a fun card. Like, I don't know if if I would play it, but I do have a Simic creature deck with a lot of ETBs. I could flash in an Agent of Treachery or something. Uh, it would suck if they ban, ban fun cards because somebody in a technically different format, although it isn't, abuses the card and now I lose my cool cards. Yeah, the precedent of this ban is kind of... Bad optics, Why I guess, Hulk? even though I don't Why know. Flash? Like, Flash seems like a fun card. Yeah, the, yeah, right. The Hulk seems like... And, the and like, that, Hulk? Like, nothing yeah. nothing good is happening. Hulk is yeah. just always combo. <laughs> like, like, I'm actually like, insulted if nature. I don't die. Yeah. If somebody you, you can for search value, up something. I think but like, Flash, I mean, like, why don't you just flash in some random garbage? It's funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the funnier part about this, and I totally agree that if you're going to ban one, that Hulk would be the one that would be uh, least impactful or, like, uh, make the game the most fun. The funniest part, though, is Hulk was banned, and this all came up because 
Hulk was banned in 2008. They unbanned it in 2017 for some reason. And then Flash Hulk dominated CDH. So they're like, oh, we'll ban Flash this time and leave Hulk legal. So I don't know why they even unbanned Hulk to begin with back in. Well, what are you gonna, fun thing you going to do with Protein Hulk other than combo up and win the game? I, I want Wizards to print another Flash combo to see what the RC does. So let, let's say they make a new card in the next set that combos with Protein Hulk. Mm. Will they ban it? Or will they just leave it mm. because they're like whatever just yeah <laughs> right, right like they're like we, we, it's, it's fine because we have thoracle now it's, it's whatever right because this was before no Thor the thoracle exists already what set did no what the set thoracle came out oh boy no theros? i think theros was uh thoracle uh, oh, no, no, no 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 uh last theros. theros beyond death uh it released uh, in january 2020 21. is when uh theros beyond death came out it's about Okay, and then Flash got eaten in April 2020, so it's very close. Yep. Okay. Uh, oh, I remember this one. Uh, Iona, Shield of Ameria. It's an... Count the pips? That's a 9-mana <laughs> 7-7 seven, seven white legendary angel. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Your opponents can't cast spells of the chosen color. Uh... Printed in 2009, banned after 10 years, 2019, July. Iona's ability to lock entire colors out of the game makes it brutally efficient at removing agency from other players at the table, especially when opponents are playing one or two color decks. This often has the effect of totally negating one or more players' involvement in a game and creates unnecessary social friction. You brutally know efficient for a nine drop. That's not brutal, efficient. A brutally efficient nine drop. Yes, you you know there was an RC game where someone got hard locked by this, so they got an argument at the table, and then the next announcement, Iona was banned, and we don't. This was one of the cards that a lot of the bands they've had recently. I mostly agreed with, like um, banning uh, actually like uh, Paradox Engine. I was very much on board. Oh, yeah. Iona when they announced it. I was like, I don't understand. Like, I never see this card. No one plays this card. Why are we out of the blue after 10 years just banning Iona? That's all that makes sense to me is someone had a bad experience with it and had the power to actually ban the card because, like, it just came so out of the blue for this one. Like, I get what they're saying. It is true that, like, in theory, someone's monocolor and you can lock them out of the game and they're at the mercy of the rest of the table dealing with it. And why would the rest of the table do it? Because you're helping someone else. So, like, I get the, like, bad play pattern, but it existed for 10 years and it just wasn't a thing that I remember being complaints about or even seeing in games very often. So I don't know if it actually was that bad in practice. Do you guys remember this card actually being brutal in your games? Like, I, I don't remember even seeing anyone play Iona very rarely. Just play Blood Moon if you want to lock people out. Like, <laughs> it's not, it stacks. It's just a super expensive stacks piece that is one in five chance of fitting the opponent. Uh, probably not one in five, but it's not really efficient. <laughs> like, there's way worse stacks pieces if you want to call it this. I don't know. So, that so seems like a personal me. one. I actually agree with this. Ooh. So this is actually what the RC should ban based on. So this is not power level, right? Like if you somehow make it to nine men and lock someone out, like whatever, who cares, right? But if you sit down in a pod and I'm playing mono black Turgrid or some whatever, some, some <laughs> mono color deck, okay? And then my opponent sits down and they have Iona in the command zone. I'm like, well... I guess I'm killing you. Like I'm going, you know, we're, 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 I'm just spending all my resources on killing you before you get to nine mana and, and dropping that, and I can't play the game anymore. And it creates this dynamic of like I need to kill, like I, regardless of what's going on in the game, I need to sit down and I, I, I get single you out, and I need to kill you. And it just makes for a weird four player dynamic. So I agree. Okay. Okay. That it should be banned, but power level wise, like no one cares. You can lock people out like super fast. This is a terrible way to lock someone out, but it creates that that social dynamic. I Unnecessary guess, like, social friction, Richard. You Unnecessary have to kill social the Iota. friction. You have to kill the Iota. To be it's, fair, remember that game where yeah. Krim played a Chroma? No, like he played like some like pro white black angel or something, and I played those colors, and I'm like, oh. well. I guess I got to kill Krim. Like his deck yep. just hard counters me and I have no choice but to just go balls to the walls and hope I get there. And that, and imagine that happens like every night at your local play group, right? Then I mean, yeah. that's weird. So I can see it. I can see a reason for that. 
to be fair, if I see Shield, uh, not Shield, it's Elishnorn, is it? The one that stops ETB triggers with oh, my yeah. Lona's deck in the command zone. I have to kill yeah. them. I bought an old code specifically <laughs> when this card came out because I can't <laughs> rely on ETB triggers. It sucks, but I'm not going to say it, Is bad. Iota any different? Like, let's say Crimson sits yes, down. He's wait, playing a control-looking yeah. deck, and I'm like, well, I'm a creature aggro deck, so I guess I just send all my resources at Crim until he dies. Like, is that any different than Iona? So, yeah. Like, so maybe, the problem maybe with, it's fine. Um, Elishnorn is it hits you regardless. If, okay, Turgrid, you should probably name black, but it's not a given that they choose your color you could politic around it i guess it is the super toxic color. it is nine man by the way um <laughs> yeah so i'd be scared of somebody it even get reanimating there, right? it maybe maybe i i, don't know. I actually about the angel that gives you protection from a card type that locks out some decks oh. as well yeah like, what are you that, gonna not do that long ago where that was that yeah. was actually pretty annoying I think I, I'm kind of coming around to Richard's take. Like, if the argument is it's actually not about power level this time, which may have been a little confused because we keep going back and forth from cards that <laughs> seem obviously yeah. about power level to cards where it's not about power level. But if the argument's like it's just a like going to cause a bad play experience and like a bad dynamic at the table, I can actually see that. I would say I don't think it needs to be banned based on power level, but I can get behind the idea that like. Maybe people just were not having fun with this card, and it does lead to you know that unnecessary social friction, as they say. I could see that, so maybe maybe it's a better banning than I gave it credit for at first. Ban counter spare. All right, here I, I got a good one for you. Trade secrets. <laughs> yeah, three blue sorcery. Target opponent draws two cards, then you draw up to four cards. That opponent may repeat this process as many times as he or she chooses. 1998, it was created, and in 2013, it was finally banned. Uh, Trade Secrets is the flag bearer for banning principle of cards which interact poorly with multiplayer nature of the format, as it's a cheap spell that allows two players to collude, draw unlimited cards, then box the other players out of the game. So I think we can agree that that's a bad play pattern, right? Like, two players sit there and like draw a million cards and then the other two are, are kind of just left out of it. However, Secret Wizards rendezvous. keeps printing these... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like Secret, Secret Rendezvous, Secret rendezvous, rendezvous. is basically <laughs> trade secrets or like Hunter no, no, or something. Like, like there's, a, there's a lot of cards that do, uh, you know, symmetrical effects for your opponents or something. But like you could use that as a way to clue, like scheming symmetry. You and a friend can tutor up two cards to dunk on the other two players uh, but it's not your entire deck. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But but how do you feel that Wizards keeps printing these in white, uh, it's like fine. wedding yeah. ring, like like it a bunch of me. these? I think it I think the problem the is the infinite deck, is. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the. I think like secret rendezvous effects are actually healthy and fun in Commander. You get the politics thrown in there. Same with like scheming symmetry. I think those are like they should print more of those. They just got to make sure it's not like do the thing infinitely. If secret rendezvous was you each draw twenty cards or something, that would be a very different story than like oh you get to draw three in white. You know, with a downside that you got to give an opponent card. So I think it's just like how far trade secrets goes which is literally your entire deck yeah it's just Secret rendezvous trade secrets you heard it <laughs> <laughs> it's not designed for commander i guess not for colluding with your opponent it's just funny that they put it in the first pre-cons ever just what kind of research so, went into these decks the whole yeah. list looks weird though so, so speaking of not designed not for commander kind. what about like fellow dear guardian like that is not on the ban list that is like, you just untap and you win if you haven't yeah. been yeah. damaged because you are starting above the life total expected of a of a 1v1 game. But those are omitted. Yeah, so so and was, is kind of like uh, that. Yeah. How, do, how do we feel about debated, that? Debated, right? Didn't they want to or think about banning Sarah Ascendant at some point because it wasn't designed for the format? I think I, think, I heard something uh, like this. That might be true. You wit. <laughs> Wait, I you I, I kind of just feel like they should just errata those cards, honestly. Just make them work the way they're supposed to. <laughs> no one plays them outside of Commander anyway. Like, give them the Commander wording, right? Like, it wouldn't really impact competitive play if they just errata them to be, like, 20 over your starting life total or whatever the number is, right? Like, they play the same in 60-card formats, and they'd work right in Commander. But isn't yeah. that the charm of these cards? 
Yeah, like I'm cool taking it. this like terrible standard card and using yeah. my big brain. The format starts at 40 life. I'm going to play wow. them in a way that they weren't originally intended because yeah. it's my casual format. I make, you know, we make up the rules. Like, I feel that's maybe that's, that's part of it, right? Otherwise, we're just going to play all standard staples if we're, you know, we're playing cards as exactly designed, right? Because the whole point of Magic the Gathering is wizards design cards a certain way and you use your giga brain and break it. You know, but, like, like Dredge okay. or Storm or I, whatever, right? Like, you don't do it the fair way. You do it the disgusting way such that it's free, right? I, and then you uh, you broke the thing. And here we are, right? I, I agree, but then they, like, they they changed their wording for more recent versions of the fact, right? So, like, should they not have done that? So we would have these, like, janky cards that we could explore in Commander? Now they would... That's the now it's side of Wizards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that they Thinking know about commander. commander, it would be boring, right? If they, Then yeah. it's like, oh, so it's different in Commander. Back then, the cool part was, oh, they didn't... This didn't exist yet, so it's nobody's fault and that it's kind of cool yeah. to use it. Now if they say, this card gets way, gets way better in Commander, like, it's... I mean, Itali is great regardless, but in it, Commander is completely busted, but they knew what they were doing. Stay kind of yeah. crazy. I, I would say hunted horror is kind of thing, right? You're like, well, actually, Ooh, this is yeah. like amazing in Commander. 1v1, it's like doo-doo. But if I played, you know, name, premier, two drop from standard and commander, like no one would care. We're like, yes, we know that card is good because it's played from like standard, modern, legacy, vintage, all the way back. Of course, it's good in commander, right? Um, okay. Speaking of good, gifts ungiven. Four mana instant in blue. Search your library for up to four cards with different names and reveal them. Target opponent chooses two of those cards. Put the chosen cards in your graveyard and the rest in your hand. Then shuffle. Printed in 2004, banned in 2009. Gift's low blue investment makes it splashable and the instant speed nature means you can use it at the most opportune time with a lower chance for countering or interaction. The ability to tutor up for two combo pieces and two ways to recur them generally makes this a one card game ender and even in the most casual play is a double tutor is that a problem arguments yeah, yeah like <laughs> is, is a double tutor for four mana actually a problem in casual play like is that actually in 2024 like a, a deal breaker because it seems very yeah power level focused i can see how this could be an issue if you're trying to break it but the whole idea of the commander ban list and the whole format is like if you try to break it it's going to be broken so please don't try to break it would this card be problematic in in, in at our power level like commander clash power level i don't feel like it would be. no you can, Maybe CDH, uh, it would be busted or something, <laughs> but that's not what the ban list is about. So yeah, this one, this one really confuses me. I don't. Oh, it's so inconsistent the ban list. Yeah, it's so inconsistent. I always forget. I always forget that it's on there. Actually, like it's it's a good card. We know it from modern, but you have to first of all, you can't just two top for cards that you need and or like two and hope your opponent gives them to you. So. You have to invest mana or have to get specific cards for this to work. So, so there's my understanding is there are ways to do it to guarantee that you're getting a two card combo to win the game. So like usually I don't know what they are, but my intuition is something yeah. like there's a breach in there or something, right? So that you can just get it out of the graveyard. Uh so this is like four mana, end of turn, get a combo, untap, win. But I'm like, so is that pure tutor. Yeah, yeah summon just a double one mana end of turn speed. vampiric tutor untap play my one card win conclusion victory. <laughs> uh but like insurrection whatever right Let's like, go like i don't know the it's kind of the same thing right like and in a casual pod you are trusted not to do that and if you do do that then you're no longer at a casual table and you're no longer welcome at the you know at this at this game right so yeah. isn't that the same for gifts like it, it's not the same thing where it drags the game on or like weird stuff happens it's just strictly power level you may win the game at instant speed like i, I don't know there is there is kind of like an anti-combo bias throughout this, isn't there? That's something I'm picking up on the more we talk about Battle this. Battlecruiser, baby! There's definitely <laughs> like, and it makes me wonder, because remember, like, Tomer is always like, oh, we should be more accepting of combos, there shouldn't be this bias against it. I wonder if it's like, does it go back to the ban list in the early days of the format? Has there just always been, like, is the format constructed in a way that you shouldn't be playing combos or it pushes people in that direction? I almost think it's true. I guess combo like, is anti-climactic, anti 
right? It, like the game just ends, especially if you're a newbie and you don't know what's going on, but the person doesn't explain the entire combo. It's like, Kiki Jiki, Pestamite, you all die. So there is, yeah. I guess then, for newer players, it is very boring unless but then, you play enough so you're just happy that you're dead and you can start the next but, game because Kratos But then Primetime gets well. points off for not ending the game. So <laughs> we, we get mad if it does end the game. We get mad yeah. if it doesn't end the game. Yeah, yeah that's the It's basically that. my philosophy of playing. <laughs> like, like, I can guarantee you if uh, whoever the RC was at the time that formulated all this they'd be playing jun mid-range and modern and they'd be like tron <laughs> gross you know storm disgusting right what are we playing we're playing underpowered creatures we're gonna Get play the there. board and we're gonna eke out every win by one percent <laughs> like this is the epitome <laughs> of a mid-range player this bad list right they're like it's unfair that you combo and I actually okay I actually agree with this shocking because I'm the mid-range player right but <laughs> in a 1v1 game you're expected to go against combo players and then you throw down all the stacks pieces the hate pieces and it's a game of like who can one up each other in four yep. player casual like no one's bringing the stacks you don't want to stacks out like the the other mid-range player they'll feel bad so there's no stacks so the combo player just runs free right so it's true like gifts is a problem when no one is playing blue <laughs> if everyone's <laughs> playing blue good luck <laughs> like yeah. good luck getting this to resolve and doing your thing right so i i get the combo thing but that's super dated. And today, Commander accommodates all players, like Tomer, the combo player, right? <laughs> like, to Im just because I play the game a certain way doesn't mean I should impose that upon you. And originally, I, I think the, the, the rules list was for this small group of whoever played EDH, and that probably made sense. But as we've expanded the Magic the Gathering crowd, it doesn't make any sense. But for some reason, these legacy things are, are still here. Um, but yeah, they're that's, definitely jump oh, players. That's super true. <laughs> it's it, it's just like the it's like rule zero, right? Where I think that was like such a brilliant idea back when Commander was a small format with a small group of friends, but then it gets a little worse when you're playing with strangers at Magic Con. So I think that's like we see those artifacts from the early days of Commander and like how they still have ramifications on what is now the biggest format in Magic today. So should they have done this? All right. Should they yeah. should they have so, posted this? You think? Are you are, are oh, you glad that they posted no. the? No, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> it was a bad idea. Yes. I I okay. So I don't know. So have they given official word? So they took the time. So um, the, these blurbs that we're reading, uh, were uh, like originally made when they made the bannings, right? And then they just paraphrased it and 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 put it onto the website. Does that mean they still wholeheartedly agree with them because they took the time to paraphrase and post them? I feel like they don't actually agree with them, but maybe because like you kind of just make it official, right? If you address it like this and and yeah. put it up here, so maybe this is all intentional. They what is, officially what is these the, are the rules. The, not to roast them too much, but what do they do if they just re like it would have been so easy to reach through all of this and then give like an updated take or something. Like it's not our job to manage the list, but we're still kind of doing it right now. Maybe unban coalition victory or something or bio with them. And uh, now they kind of just made the same statements again, which kind of updates them because now I expect this to be the latest update. Why would they update it with all the information? So no, they shouldn't have posted it like this. Also, what is their job if not updating at least this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I heard no offense, but that's weird. I, I would love to see like editor's notes or something just like at the end if you I yeah. like that they're preserving the history of this I think I think that's a good idea I want the history of magic to be preserved so I like that they have this is what we were thinking in whatever 2004 2005 I would love to see below it just a little like hey this is what we're thinking in 2024 like the RC is changing you know the game keeps evolving here's what we think about this now so I would love to see that I don't know maybe maybe that'll be a future project for the RC in a future year maybe they can go through and ensure their current thoughts because the game has just changed so much and the format has changed an unbelievable amount since a lot of these mannings happened with pre-cons and commander legends and the magic cons like it's just not the same format so i'd love to see updated thoughts on it too that would be my biggest takeaway but i actually think i'm glad they did it i i like that the history is being preserved that's something watsi doesn't do that well and has deleted a lot of their old stuff so i'm glad that the rc is at least preserving the history of the format even if i don't agree with a lot of the rationales I I would like them to say something like, 
this is the historical reason for why we banned it. And we are scheduled to revisit this card in like August 2024. So hang tight. You know, something like that, right? Like, you know, like have some plan for looking at all these cards and just be like, look, this is old stuff. This is what we felt at the time. We're just going to put it here. And we're not sure if we still agree with this. And we'll let you know at this date. Right? And then that that would actually be perfect. Yeah. Uh, or they could actually say, this is what we believe in. And this is what it is going forward. That would also yeah. clear up some, you know, like, oh, this is actually their philosophy, right? Like they mean it. Uh, that would also clear it up. Uh, so just a little extra clarity. But I, I do like the effort of trying to be more transparent. Right. But yeah, it may be a little weird to be transparent with really old information. So uh, <laughs> the next step is to update it. The next step would be to update it or solidify it if it's actually correct. Right. You're like, you know, it's actually been revisited and we still believe this. And here we go. So to be fair to the RC, though, I, as you might have noticed from me arguing about all of this, I don't think there's a good way to do this like in general. Because once you start banning stuff, you can always say, but this card does it, and this card does it, and then we have to ban all the stacks pieces, every extra turn spell, everything that destroys lands, every combo. Do you ban all combo pieces? I don't know. And I think that it might be an bill. impossible <laughs> task because you can't make everybody happy. So oh, it's definitely an impossible with this. task. I, would, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I think it is an impossible task. Although the other direction you could go is just like unban everything and let the oh, players figure yes. it out. <laughs> or more yep. that direction. I mean, there's cards that I think are worse, like Dockside and Expropriate. It's way worse than somebody biorhythming me or even the good cards on this list. It's like, yeah, but there's worse stuff like Humility. Oh my god, thank you. It's <laughs> disgusting. You know what I would like to actually see? Like a a formal QA or something where we as a community somehow come up with a list of 10 cards. Like we somehow vote on it. And the RC gives us a reason as to why they're not banned. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Right? Like, like, <laughs> like, like I I can see, like, you know, I, I can see some of the glimpses of their philosophy in the bands, but there are cards that are not banned, and I would like to know why. Ooh. And I, I would like to see them. Actually, they've already done that. They already gave an answer for Dockside. <laughs> well, what was the answer for like Dockside? This. Something like it scales with the power level of the group. So in a crappy uh, power level group, it does nothing, essentially, is what they 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 said. Uh, but like that that kind of be interesting, right? Like why is Thoracle not banned, right? Or, you know, stuff like that. And they could do a little Q&A or a little write-up yeah. on, on stuff that, that's good in the format too, right? Maybe we just got to get the RC on the podcast and, and put them in the hot seat, ask them the questions about different guards. That would be, that would be if you're listening, RC, <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> All we'll right, nice, so that wraps, up, <laughs> that wraps up our <laughs> podcast on reacting to the commander ban list. You can check it out, mtgcommander.net. Every card is there and you can click the little button and it pulls up the explanation. Let us know what you agree with, what you disagree with, what you don't understand. Uh, and uh, maybe you can make the ultimate guard comment of the week next week. So uh, we'll see you all here back next week. <laughs>